to all Americans tonight in all of our cities and in all of our towns, I make this promise. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. God bless you and good night. I love you. Hospital Porter's pride and dignity stopped the New World Order. Welcome to her Panwo TV. <coughs> <coughs> That was Donald Trump there, reciting his famous speech, We Will Make America Great Again. Um, it's become, a, it's, it's his catchphrase, and um, it's become even become an acronym, M-A-G-A, -A, MAGA. Um, you know, and it says a book called MAGA, Making America Great Again. Uh, by Vox Day, I believe, Mike Cernovich. Um, now, um, the impossible has happened. What I would have said was impossible, and even... Even when I made my previous film in this series, I made a film the other day um, before the election, I didn't quite believe it. Now, um, in terms of the background to this, I do recommend, if you've not done so already, go to the link in the description box and please watch my previous film um, called uh, U um, US Presidential Election 2016. <coughs> this is... Um, the one I said I'd make in there after the election, uh, when I knew the result, and the result is Donald Trump won. I did stay up and watch it through the night, although I dr dropped off a couple of times. Um, he, run, he won by quite a significant margin as well. It was um, something of a landslide, and um, we didn't really know for certain until about 7 in the morning, and I had to then get up for work. I just got home from work, so I'm a bit tired, but um, how do I feel? Am I pleased about this? I wouldn't say pleased, I'd say I'm relieved. I think, as I said in the previous film, Donald Trump is a non-establishment candidate. And the reasons, <coughs> well, my reasons for that I explain in the film. I don't need to reiterate what I went through in that, in that previous film. This is going to be a much shorter video, incidentally. Um, I don't really need to reiterate that, but I mean, I gave you my reasons why I think he's a non-establishment candidate. He's, um, and, um... He's won. He beat Hillary Clinton, despite everything. Despite, no doubt, there was a certain amount of fiddling with the ballot. There was an awful amount of um, very biased propaganda from the media. And um, I respect the American people not for not buying it and for, for voting in large enough numbers. So even if there was some kind of fiddling of the ballot and dead people voting and um, just hacking and viruses and things, it didn't work. There was no false flag alien invasion, luckily. Uh, I would, I'm very glad, very glad to be able to report to you that that didn't happen. <laughs> um, and of course, J Donald Trump is now president. Now, um, this answers a question I think I asked in the previous film: is what they're planning to do. And um, I get there was a no they had a number of options open to them. The powers that be had a number of options open to them how to contain this situation in which Donald Trump was actually looking like he was going to win. And um, there weren't many options. One of them, though, was to... One of them was the, the fake alien invasion or other kind of national emergency to cancel the election. Uh, <coughs> but the one they opted for was to allow him to get the presidency and then see if they could just simply manage him as the president and they've obviously decided they think they can they think they can manage this guy as the president he may be non-establishment now but they probably plan to turn him into an establishment figure which is certainly a possibility it's the least fuss I mean it means they can if they if, they, if, they, if they're confident they can do it they don't need to sort of cancel elections and things like that but go to the trouble of false flag alien attacks and uh, things like that although incidentally there's a film coming out called um called uh, What's it called? The Arrival coming out in a couple of days. I'm, I'm interested to see that. It seems to be about alien invasion. Hmm. Um, shame it was after the election. <laughs> so no propaganda there. But um, anyway, I digress. 
as I said, it, it, I, what, I sat through the night watching it, and it's, it's, I got the gist of what was happening. The difference, there was the map of the USA with the 50 states, and they turned, depending on how much um, Trump was leading in each state, or Hillary, Hillary Clinton was leading in each state, they would turn a different shade of red or blue, red for Trump, um, blue for Hillary. So if it was dark purple, it meant that Hillary was way ahead in that state. And if it was dark red, it meant that Trump was way ahead in that state. But if it was just pink, it meant he had a slight lead. And if it was just sort of like sky blue, it meant that Hillary had a slight lead. And um, in the end, he got the battleground states. He got Florida, Ohio, and then what we were sat waiting around. I ended up dropping off to sleep. There was a couple of the states took ages to come through. But by the time I, eventually I saw that the, as with the Brexit situation, the um, the red line eventually passed through the middle point, meaning that Trump had won. And he and it was quite a significant margin. He, I think it was two hundred and. 90 compared to 218 for, for Hillary, so it was quite a big um, big margin or something like that. At least that was the situation when he won, but they had other states to count. But um, yeah, um, there's a massive amount of celebration at the Trump HQ. A lot of people online were saying how happy they were. A lot of people I know were, were very pleased about this. Um, there's, there was tears at the Hillary camp. Um, <coughs> people were crying and that John Podesta was looking very downhearted. Um, I suppose it could easily have been the other way around, couldn't it? And I thought it was going to be the other way around. Now, this, another thought did occur to me, another option that was open to them. And that is that Trump will die while in office. <coughs> and either... <coughs> either, um, either he will... He will die in office, and when that happens, his um, his vice president will take over. Then again, what happens if he dies? Because you see, there's now a period of over two months before he even gets inaugurated, and, and where he's now a president elect, which means he's not actually the proper president until um, until January the twentieth, when he is inaugurated, and he swears on the Masonic Bible and things like that, and stuff like that. The same one that Obama used, etc. Now, um, I'm just going to. Uh, I was just thinking, what happens if he dies before then? Um, what happens? Just don't Google it. What happens if President Elect dies before being sworn in? Okay. What happens if President Elect, if if a winning presidential candidate dies or becomes incapacitated between the counting of electoral votes in Congress and the inauguration, the Vice President Elect will become President Elect. Right. That explains it, which means in his case it's uh, Mike Pence. Now, who is Mike Pence? I mean, this is something I really should have looked into before. Mike Pence. I'm looking up on Wikipedia. Let's have a look. Ooh, he's a, he's a grim-looking booker. He's the Vice President-elect of the United States. Uh, as the Governor of Indiana. To Indiana. So it's got, got sort of piggy, evil little eyes and uh, things like that. He's got. Nightly, nicely combed white hair, so he must have a good pension. Um, anyway, he's uh, what's his? Uh, I don't know what his controversies. Let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, he's very keen on. Um, oh, he's a. Oh, he's a biblical creationist. He believes in. He believes in the. The se the seven days and the Noah's Ark and stuff like that. <laughs> All right. Well, um, nobody's perfect, I guess. But um, what if Trump dies? And I suppose he become he is a career politician, and he will become the um, president. And maybe he's. Um, I wonder. Do you suppose that he is? Um, do you suppose he's kind of this is a Trojan horse situation with Trump as the horse? I don't know. See, the thing about it is, I mean, I remember thinking to myself. If um, I, I thought to myself, if they may want to kill Trump now, he's been elected. But I thought that that wouldn't work. I think I don't think I don't think people would buy it. Um, you see, they would have done it long ago. I, I as I said in the previous film, I believe that they would um, they would actually kill Trump. I, I wrote several times through the course of this year, earlier through the spring. That Trump would die. He would either be removed from office, he would either be deselected, or he would die. Now, if he, they would do that before the election, they wouldn't wait till after the election. I don't think they would do that. 
Unless it was some kind of if you some kind of stalking horse for Mike Pence, I don't know. Oh. That's something to think about, and that hadn't occurred to me until just now. So, um, oh, what does this mean? Um, now, I know what the sceptics are going to say. They're going to say, well, Ben, you know, if your predictions of conspiracy don't come true, maybe they're not planning anything. Maybe there is no conspiracy, and you're just imagining it. That's, that's what I think you sceptics are going to say. My answer to that is, again, I, I don't agree because I've been studying this for a long time and I've seen the hidden hand and I've studied the hidden hand, how it operates. And I, but I, I do believe they don't pull all the strings. They just, they, have to, they just nudge and influence. They don't pull all the strings. If they, if they were able to pull all the strings, they could just have their new world order now. I said that when I was, when I was with Niall, when I was talking to Niall in the interview in a previous film. So what does this mean? Well, there's, there's going to be a lot of protests. There's already been some protests, I think, some some violence. Um, will he will he be taken into the dark room, as Bill Hicks said, and be shown the film of the Kennedy assassination from the grassy knoll and said, and asked, right, any questions? <laughs> I wonder. Because he just because he's not establishment now doesn't mean he can't be turned into an establishment figure. However, this, I still believe this is something that was not meant to happen, and it's, if the plan, I think Hillary Clinton was destined to play a very, very important role in whatever plans they had, and one of those plans appeared to be a conflict with Russia, which would maybe draw China in when you, then you could have a world war. This is going to be a lot more difficult, because Trump has said quite clearly he wants to build bridges with Russia, he wants to join Russia in destroying uh, the American asset ISIS. Maybe somebody will have a word in his ear. We'll soon find out. We'll find out what kind of man he is. But, uh... Excuse me. Oh, no, no, not my sleep last night. Watching, te watching this on telly. Um, yeah, Hillary wanted to have this conflict, confrontation with Russia. They forced a no-fly zone over Syria um, because actually she was using ISIS... ISIS has been used by the West to destabilise Syria and attack the Assad regime. Russia is destroying ISIS, so America would try and stop them destroying ISIS, and to do that they need a no-fly zone. This means basically Russian planes are going to have to be shot down. Uh, the moment Russian planes are shot down, Russia will retaliate. They'll attack American aircraft and shoot them down. They'll attack American missile bases, uh, um, surface-to-air missile bases, things like that. And once you can't go a little bit down that path without going into full war, and of course, full war in this case does mean it would eventually, almost certainly, come to the exchange of nuclear weapons. And as I said in the previous film, Hillary would just go into a bunker while the entire country would be destroyed and most people in it killed. And maybe that's the idea. But I repeat myself. <coughs> it's going to be a lot more difficult. Trump is now he's, says he's committed to building bridges with Russia and to winding down this tension between the two superpowers. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's not. It's, I think maybe Americans are too used to fighting one-sided wars against things like people like Afghanistan and Iraq. They don't realise, you know, there are enemies out there that can fight back. Right. Um. And another question, of course, means where does this leave the disclosure issue? UFOs. Are the government going to come clean? Now, is Trump the disclosure president? Now, based on what Steve Bassett had been talking about, I think he was rather banking on Hillary being, being, the, uh, being the president. I'll have to get back on the show and talk to him again. Because, I mean, I wonder where he's going to go now. Trump has not mentioned UFOs. Trump has not made the same comments that John Podesta has. Again, that's not a question I can answer right now. As it's, it's, it's only a few hours ago the, the election finished, so uh, it's, it's now it's four in the afternoon, so um, we won't know for a while exactly what Trump's policy is going to be. We don't know what's going to happen between now and his inauguration date. Um, and that's the questions I can only answer later on, and I will. I will let keep you informed. 
I'll also see if I can get Steve Bassett back on her Panama radio. Because I do really want to... I do really... Um, I do really want to get his take on things. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I think we dodged a bullet. Put it that way. I think at the very last moment, we have escaped something. And this is rather like Brexit. And a complete aberration has emerged in the world of politics that the powers that be did not intend. It's a bit like in Lord of the Rings when Bilbo picks up the ring. <laughs> so we'll find out what happens from now, from here between there and now. We'll see. Um, but... There's a, there's a great sense of optimism I see online among most people I know. Um, the, the sense of change. They didn't. Uh, they realised that Obama's change was fake, and they they feel that this will be real change. And I hope they're right. I hope they're right. I'm not saying this is springtime in Narnia, but it it's it, it's it can only be good. And this the fact that a non-establishment candidate has won the U.S. presidential election has to be a good sign. It has to be a good sign that there is. There is, is there is a major malfunction in, in, in deep in the deep in the workings of the new world order, and that means good. I hope it spreads. I hope the entire thing breaks down. So, uh, whatever you do, I mean, as I said, I hope and pray all Americans are well, and I hope whatever you, whatever your feelings about this election, that things will be okay for you. And thank you for watching Panwo TV yet again. Hospital Porter's pride and dignity stopped the new world order. <laughs>